Happy Sabbath, Paul Paul. Come on, we could do a little better. Happy Sabbath, everyone. There we go. There we go. It is a pleasure to be here with you all. Uh, This is truly one of the most friendliest churches I have visited in quite some time. Amen. I want to thank you for your warm welcome that I've received since I've been here. And I want to take some time to thank Dina Rodriguez for allowing me and extending this invitation, and Mona for securing this opportunity that I have to be here with you all today. Uh, I am in a season of celebration, seeming how I am ending my time at the seminary. I'll be leaving in December, and so I promised Dina that I would come and share some inspiration with you all today. Pray with me. Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to look at your word and for you to reveal who you are through it. And so we ask that you lead us into wisdom, knowledge, truth, and understanding of your word today. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. If you have your Bibles, we're looking at Mark chapter 4. We're looking at Mark chapter 4. And we'll be looking at one of my favorite stories to read in the Bible. We're looking at Mark chapter 4, and we're looking at verse 35. Mark 4, beginning with verse 35. Mark 4. A few years ago, when I was an undergrad, my professor took us on a mission trip to the Dominican Republic. Now, my professor is from this country, and so usually on these mission trips, the last day, they want to take you somewhere where you can uh, debrief from your experience. And so he posed the vote. We can go to the beach, or he can take us to this special place that he knows. We said, man, this man is from here, so he must know this special place. Lo and behold, it's his favorite place. He loves mangoes. So he took us to a place where we can pick fresh mangoes. Now, the problem with this place is that it's on an uninhabited island in the middle of a lake. And so we had to take a boat to get to this island. Then when we get off and we get to pick some mangoes there and, you know, all these things. Our excitement was so overwhelmed that we did not pay attention to the type of transportation we had to this island. We didn't pay attention. All I remember is getting on the boat and getting on the island. I was so overjoyed. When it started to rain... We said, oh, it's time for us to go. The sea started to rise. The island started to go underwater. And all of a sudden, now I'm paying attention to the type of boats we have. There were these little skinny canoes with these homemade engines for us to get from one side to the other. Now, I'm a big fella. And there were some other folk on the boat. And so we get on this boat and the water's coming in, and you see all the cracks, and we start leaning in the back. And now I'm calculating how far am I between I jump off board and swim. I mean, we were going under. I mean, we were bailing. I'm looking for life jackets. No life jackets. Just the fisherman's boat. That's it. Just, just a little homemade boat where men go, sh- go fishing And we're traveling on this thing. And I will admit I was scared for my life. But thank God I knew how to swim. Just right before, I was said, I'm jumping ship, guys. I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm jumping ship. We find ourselves back on shore, safe and secure. This leads us to our story where now I can resonate with the experience of the disciples in this passage. And I'll read it for you. And it says, on the same day when evening had come, he said, meaning Jesus, let us cross over unto the other side. And when they had left the multitude, they took up along in the boat as he was, and there were also other boats that went with them, 37. 
And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat on the boat, so that it was already filled. But he was sleeping in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him, saying, Jesus, teacher, do you not care that we are going to perish? Then he rose and rebuked the winds and said, See, peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But then he said to them, Why are you so afraid? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and they said one to another, Who can this be that even the winds and seas obey him? Now, a little pre-drop to Jesus' experience was that he was preaching all day long. He was exhausted. The human part of him was tired. He could barely walk or move. He was, I don't know if, you, if you've ever preached all day before, but it's exhausting. Or you've taught and talked all day. You're exhausted. Or you've seen patients all day. You're exhausted. Or written papers all day. Or looked at a computer all day. You're exhausted. This was Jesus. And so he said to them, it's time for us to go. It's time for us to go somewhere else so that I might be able to experience some rest. And so the story goes that as soon as they get in the boat, man, before his head hit the pillow, as my wife would say, he was asleep. And Jesus was sleeping peacefully. But the Bible tells us that there was a storm that came that began to rock this boat. Now, the, the extent of Jesus' exhaustion is indicated by the fact that he slept through the storm. I mean, this boat was rocking back and forth. The men were yelling and, and bailing, and he slept through it all. Now, there are some components that need to happen before one falls asleep. It is being completely exhausted and being in a position of being completely relaxed. And so sometimes we fall asleep on the couch. I remember the last couch I just bought, I bought it with it in mind that can I sleep on this? <laughs> if I can't sleep on this, babe, we can't get it. Because I want to sleep on the couch. And so we want to be in a position of relaxing and peace. This is what brought Jesus to a place where he can fall asleep. But the problem was that the devil had a different plan and that he created a storm in which there could be no peace. I'm preaching today. Stay with me. Unlike many of our experiences... We are often exactly in the same position. We are finding ourselves wanting to be in peace. But forces have other plans for us. Life has other plans for us. Emails and phone calls have other plans for us. Have you ever looked at your phone and said, please don't let it be this person? <laughs> because, you know, once you pick up, a challenge is on the way. In fact, we often seek just peace. We even call our home a place of peace. It's where we can relax from all things. Men like to call it a man cave. This idea of experiencing peace. But if you live long enough, you will realize and come to the conclusion peace is far and few between. That you are often encountered with the challenges of being a human on planet Earth. Whether it is work, death, school, kids, children, peers, bullying. Whatever the challenge is, you will experience them and your boat will be rocked. And so as this boat is rocking... The disciples are in the boat bailing, and Jesus is sleeping. You know what I equate that to? Let's say four of you guys, four grown men, are on the road driving. You catch a flat tire. All three except one get out to change the tire. One of them stays in the car while the other three is fixing the tire. That's a problem, brother. You need to get out the car, too. 
Come on now. We, we need you to angle something, lift something. We're not about to be lifting the, while you in the car too. You know, you got to get out the car too. They're bailing. They're going down. And Jesus is sleeping. He's at complete peace. He's in a complete state of relaxation, dreaming about seeing his father one day, having a good old time. While you're in the position of rocking back and forth, the clouds are darky, the boat is filling with water, all you got is a little cup, and you're just trying to get the water out. You're afraid for your life that you might not make it to the other side, and Jesus is sleeping on the job. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt that while you're in the midst of turmoil and challenges, that Jesus is sleeping on the job? And so the disciples wake him up. They were angry. They were upset. They asked Jesus probably the most important question of humankind. Jesus, do you care that I'm about to perish? That is the essence of the question. They didn't ask about his capacity. They didn't ask if God was willing or unwilling. They didn't question whether he had the power to do it. They questioned whether he cared enough to intervene in their lives and change it. Do you care? While I'm in the midst of all these challenges and struggle, you up there in the most holy place chilling with the Father. Angels are singing your praises. You're eating good. You're living good. You got everything you can possibly want or desire. But I'm here still living the day-to-day challenges of life. And as far as I know, you're asleep. And so they wake him up. Jesus, do you care? That we are perishing, we're sinking, we're going down. And it's not just me, Father. If you look around, if you're not just me, Jesus, all the other boats. You know what the, the difference is? You know what the challenging part of this is? The only reason why they're in that situation is because Jesus said, let's go. Right? Y'all remember the beginning of the story. Come on, guys. Let's go to the other side. And so they trust God. They get on the boat. The boat is in trouble. And the only reason why we're in trouble is because of you and you're sleeping on the boat. I imagine that when Jesus made that command, not everybody went. Everybody didn't go. Everybody did not follow Jesus because the request was foolish. Why am I going to get in my boat at night and go to another place that I might not be familiar with? First of all, it's at nighttime and I'm on a big old lake with no lights. So I can imagine people on the shore is saying, you going? You going? One person said, I'll go. Says, brother, you crazy. How you going to get there? How you going to see? And the people on the shore is looking at the people going like they're crazy, right? And the bad part is, the people on the shore, the people on the shore, now is witnessing the people that went in trouble. They're on the shore looking at, I told them, I told them not to go. Now they're going to lose their boat that they used to fish with. And now how they want to provide, I told them, they should have never followed Jesus. 
And it's because of them, they're now about to lose not just their boat, but they're about to lose their lives. All because Jesus said, let's go. And then he's sleeping on a job. So they wake him up, Lord, don't you care? Don't you care? I imagine Jesus was half asleep, got a little sleep in his eye a little bit. Trying to gather his balance on a rocky boat. Trying to actually understand. He's just been woken up abruptly, just trying to understand what's happening. Wind is flying, rain is flying, water is flying, you're rocking. You left in peace, but Jesus is waking up in turmoil. So he extends his arm, and with his divine power, causes there to be peace in the storm. He looks at his disciples, says, why are you so afraid? Uh, it's obvious, Lord. We're about to die. We're sinking. He says to them, I imagine, if you sink, I sink. Oh, come on, stay with me. Stay with me. If you drown, I drown. If I'm at peace and can sleep, and if I'm not worried, I'm going to preach, stay with me. If I'm not worried, right, why are you? Especially if we are in the exact same situation. If we are in the exact same situation, then my response should resemble yours. Right? I should be panicking too. Jesus should be bailing too. We both in trouble, John. Everybody, let's get together and start bailing. But I'm asleep. The proper response would have been like, I'm going to sleep too. <laughs> and so we spend up all night worrying about the challenges of tomorrow, thinking that Jesus is sleeping on the job. How about you go to sleep too? If he sleep, you sleep. If he not worried, why are you worried? Because you must understand that you are in the exact same position. If you depress, he depressed. If you worry, he worry. If you scared, he scared. If you broke, he broke. <laughs> if you got bills, we got bills. Wow. If you got kids, we got kids. And so we find ourselves assuming that Christ doesn't identify with our challenges, and he does. And so we must pay attention to how he responds to the exact same challenges and emulate that. So the disciples are in trouble, as if Jesus is on shore and they're the only ones in the boat. Jesus is in the boat too. He's in the boat too. And he was in a position of complete relaxation to a point where he can sleep like a baby. Wakes up, solves the problem. And then he goes on and he says, how is it that you have no faith? Now I'm going to challenge you here. Most would argue that Jesus referring to their faith in him. Right? Why do you not have faith in me? That's not what Jesus was asking. Because obviously they had enough faith to wake him up and to know that he would solve the problem. <laughs> right? Right? They had enough faith. We, all right, if we're in trouble, we're going to go to Jesus and Jesus is going to help me. Right? That's the faith. But he says, how is that you have no faith? I want to challenge you that I believe Jesus was saying that they had the capacity to solve the problem themselves. that they had the ordained power for them to raise their hand and for the peace to be still in their lives. Isn't that the great challenge? Isn't that 
what it means to be a disciple, to do what Jesus did. And to be asked to be a disciple, it is the authority that I believe that you can do what I can do. That's what it meant. During the biblical times that Jesus was living in, if a rabbi said to a pope, says, I want you to be my disciple, he was saying, I believe that at some point in time, you'll be able to do what I can do. In fact, even at the death of Christ, he said, go and do what? More. You can do more. So he says, how is it that you've spent all this time with me? You come to church every Sabbath. You read your Sabbath school lesson every other day. Come on now. (laughs) Come on now. And you're engaged and you still walk out of here feeling powerless. Feeling subject to the mercies and pressures that this world bombards you with. So finally, the disciples sit and wonder, how is it that this man can do these things? Finally, we get to the other side. You'll find that in chapter 5, verse 1. The peace is there. They arrive to their destination safely and witnessing the miracle that the Lord had just done for them. They can now sit on shore and look back at that sea and say, we've conquered it. Somehow the people on the other side, right? We're going back to them, right? You know the problem they have? is that now when they get on their boats and then they come over to the other side, when a storm arises in their lives, there is no Jesus in their boat. There is no Jesus in their stern. There is no Jesus that they can run and call to for help because they opted not to follow him. There is no power that they can call on. There is no solution that they have. And so my encouragement and call to you is that as crazy as the request might be, right? As crazy as the call might be, you have the assurance that you and Jesus are in this together. No matter where he asks you to move to, what job he might ask you to take, how he might lead you, it is holding God accountable. You can hold God accountable. You know what that means? Calling him out on his promises, right? (laughs) Lord, you promised you was going to. I read this in your word that you were going to, right? with the understanding that you and Jesus are in this together. Every morning you wake up in the morning and you start your day, it is with this understanding that today me and Jesus are in this together. We going to work together. We dropping off the kids together. We picking them up together. We going to see the principal together. We're making phone calls together. Come on now. I'm helping raise my kids. We are in this together. So whatever challenges that you might be experiencing, understanding that you and Jesus are in it together. As long as you're with Jesus, he's with you. Pray with me. Pray with me. Father in heaven, there are some people sitting on our shores. And Jesus is calling, saying, come, follow me. And some of us have not made a decision to follow you, Lord. The request seems crazy. Doesn't make sense. It's scary. It's not something I usually do. 
But Father, give us the courage and the faith to step out and trust you and to understand that we're in this together. All the blessings we experience together, Lord, all the challenges, we're in this together. And so, Father, we accept the promise that, lo, you are with us always, even until the ends of the earth, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And so, Father, we claim that promise today, that as we might wake up tomorrow morning with brand new challenges, that we hold on to your unchanging hand, and we say, Father, can we do this together? And the church says, amen, amen.